It's rising. It's rising. Hi everyone, Rise, rise to me, Rise Tano, Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Wise Blood album, Titanic Rising. This is the latest full-length album from singer and songwriter Natalie Maring, aka Wise Blood. Titanic Rising may be the first album from Natalie Maring on the Sub Pop label, but she has dropped many, many, many records to get to this point. She actually has played bass in the long-running experimental rock band Jackie O Motherfucker as well. And for years now, I've been hearing Wise Blood songs here in there that I've thought were decent, but there's never been quite enough of a wow factor to pull me into an entire album, loving it from front to back. I did enjoy hearing her team up quite a bit in 2017 with Ariel Pink for a, a pretty sweet EP. And Natalie's last record under the Wise Blood name, even though I wasn't crazy for it, it was the closest I had come up until that point to being enchanted by her, her music. Her particular brand of psychedelic, ambient, spacey, folk, and pop. Going even further back into Natalie's discography reveals a pretty impressive artistic evolution up until this point, given that a lot of her early works were pretty noisy, experimental, droney, and now with Titanic Rising we have this pure expression of lavish, exuberant pop. It's just straight pop. Sure, it's kind of vintage and a little nostalgic in its style and aesthetic. The instrumentals and the songwriting on this record are heavily, heavily, heavily reminiscent of the folk pop and chamber pop of the late 60s and early 70s, with a few progressive passages thrown in a la early Kate Bush. There are also some indie contemporaries out there with equally lavish and dreamy sounds that I think this record shares a lot of overlap with. A little bit of Beach House, especially some Julia Holter, very much Julia Holter. Some of the chord progressions on this album might resonate heavily with fans of the Elephant Six Collective. To get a major Achilles heel with this record out of the way, when it comes to having a voice with character, I think Natalie does have some ground to make up for on this LP. I wouldn't say she has the most recognizable voice in the room, but she does sing incredibly well, she has good range, she also has the talent to be pulling off these lead vocals and vocal harmonies in the background, which I guess if she had a quirky or a more idiosyncratic vocal style might come off a bit more awkward. Still though, the instrumentals on this thing are layered so well. They're EQ'd nicely, they're mixed cleanly, it's a very very panoramic feel, you really get a, a good taste and a view of all of the instrumentation. The perfect amount of pillowy softness to the instrumentation as well, a little bit of reverb, a little bit of splash, just to add some space. The instrumentals on this thing also feature some pretty nice dynamic swells on these tracks too. It's not just a, a formless droney blob of, of reverb, a, a hollow mess of nothing, where every single sound is sort of like bleeding into itself throughout the entire record and it just like has no body to it. It's not a monolithic wall of meh. Shout out to Jonathan Rado of Foxygen fame for taking part in the production on this thing, as well as Wise Blood too. Just generally, the production here, it's mwah, 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 mwah. Between the heavenly pianos and the slinky guitars, the gentle bass, the very simple drums that do drop some very effective fills here and there, the airy organs the wonderful strings. The color palette on this album is great. Sounds very rich, sounds very glamorous, even if at points it is a little similar to those contemporaries I mentioned earlier. But one of the things I think separates Wise Blood from them on this record are some of the overtly vintage nods she makes throughout the tracks on this album, like on the song Every Day where you can hear these very prominent saloon style piano chords and cheeky hand claps. It's a little glammy too, you can eventually hear these rising vocal harmonies that feel like they're lifted straight out of the Beach Boys playbook. But even though there is a heaping helping of nostalgia packed throughout this record, I think Wiseblood combines all of these older pop elements together in a way that feels very modern. And one more thing that makes Titanic Rising stick out is how straightforward and instantaneously orgasmic the songwriting is. Every hook on this thing pops, even on the tracks that are just maybe like okay. And what's funny is that Natalie achieves this without putting out an album that's really all that punchy or overly aggressive or anything like that. I mean, some of the best chorus transitions throughout this record feel like I am just being 
overwhelmed with sound and emotion, like what happens when you let the floodgates open on a really cathartic cry. Natalie somehow captures that exact energy on the track Something to Believe, just as we are hit very subtly with this light drum fill, and then on comes this mountain of what sounds like harpsichord and weepy guitars and droney bass. I just laid down and cried. The waters don't really go by me. The whole thing makes me want to throw on some lipstick, my prettiest dress, and just lay back and stare into space longingly. What? And look, and when I say every song on this thing enchants to some degree, every song on this thing enchants. The opening track on this thing feels like I'm, I'm opening a, a, a giant set of, of great double doors to a, a beautiful, wonderful hall of wonderful wonder. It starts off subtle and eventually changes into this glitzy and glamorous chamber pop, featuring the kind of string accompaniment that made David Bowie's best tracks feel larger than life. Then there's the sad and elegant Andromeda, which makes me feel like I'm, I'm living in the front cover of the album itself. Feeling kind of sad and isolated and weightless in a room totally submerged underwater. This is also one of many, 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 many instances of Natalie on the record singing... Uh, uh, just some very difficult lyrics about love. Stop calling, it's time to let me be, if you think you can save me, I dare you to try. Also on the song Every Day, sailing off on the ships to nowhere, got a lot of things to clear away, got a lot of years of bad love to make okay. These painfully sad lyrics contrast really well with the track's jaunty instrumental. It is an excellently arranged piece of sunshine pop. It's instantly addictive and features this grand outro that's on the level of a group like uh, The Who. And to take it back to the lyrics a little bit, love really is like the main focus of a lot of the material on this thing. And it seems like Natalie is kind of circling around a certain person or a certain relationship. I don't know who or what relationship it is that Natalie is so deeply infatuated with on this record that is just sort of itching at her. But these feelings of sadness and loss and loneliness and longing and desire, they permeate every corner of this album. I also like the stiff lead vocals and swelling analog synth notes, as well as the dizzying synth arpeggios that are just locked in very robotically, uh, that play at the very start of the song movies. Sounds like the kickoff of a, a Laurie Anderson or a Tangerine Dream Odyssey or something. The song eventually moves into this fantastic buildup, feels truly intergalactic. The reverbs on the vocal harmonies here just ring out into oblivion. The title is so utterly fitting because this song just feels cinematic, the most cinematic on the entire record. For the very end, we reach this heavy, drony climax with driving drums. A lot of sound bleeding into itself, but it's so explosive, it's so hard-hitting. Uh, uh, the, the chaos of it really just kind of adds to the excitement factor. It's in the last leg of the record where I think things trail off just a little bit, or Natalie and Jonathan start slightly painting themselves into a corner. The song Wild Time is a cute and folky oasis on the album, but it's it's not one of the most solid tunes, in my opinion. It doesn't pop quite as hard as much of everything else here. Meanwhile, Mirror Forever. has a solid tune at the core of it, but the instrumental, I think, could use a, a bit more variation when the chorus eventually does come in. Uh, instrumentally, it does feel like a bit of a dud. A bit blobby and one-dimensional, in my opinion. The song Picture Me Better, thankfully, is a better tune, better instrumental, sees the acoustic elements of this album embraced even further. The chorus is one of the most angelic on the entire record, and lyrically, it feels like a kind of idyllic send-off for this album's themes of, again, romance and love and not so much romance and love. Sure, the relationship on this thing seems like it never really fully completed or connected, but this track does leave us with a positive sense of closure, I guess. But yeah, this album is great. This is fire. The songs, the production, the arrangements, which are near genius most of the time. The mostly watertight track list. I like the few transitional moments peppered throughout this album, too. I mean, sure, a few lulls on the back end, but overall, I think the album's biggest issue is that Natalie could be doing a lot more, I think, to put her own unique spin on this sound and on this style, which I've heard done again and again and again before. Though, again, tons of respect 
for the fact that in this instance she has performed within this chamber pop and art pop style so well. In fact, after this record, I would say that I'm very much looking forward to hearing Natalie continue to explore and experiment and uh, find her own lane within this style, or even move on to something else. Who knows? Very solid, very beautiful. Feeling a strong 8 to a light 9 on this thing. Tran. Position, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video for you to check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Wiseblood, Titanic Rising, forever.